the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom Alright, Maddie's just finished her watch The sun is just coming out So I'm, I'm coming out now So Maddie got us between Dominica and Guadalupe Around the horn the little butter or corner of the little butterfly wing and now we're just gonna skirt our way on the leeward side of Guadalupe so we're we're in the home stretch for we're, we're getting there and uh oh, last night it was downwind sailing between Dominica and Guadalupe and it was so nice uh, can't wait to turn downwind again after we pass Guadalupe oh we're now in the lee of the land and Maddie and I had a long discussion about whether or not to go this way. So going on the windward side is 50 miles longer, which is half a day sailing and, in, and rough. Yeah, we went on the leeward side and uh, there's not much wind. So we're full sail, we went about three to four knots. And it's funny, I wonder if we could go this fast all the time if we set deadlines for ourselves. Because we want to get there by Christmas, which means I want to get there by Christmas Eve that we were there for Christmas. So I'm like struggling. And anytime our speed gets lower than 4.2 knots, which is 100 miles a day, we change sails, we put up more, we, we do something to go faster, or we change the course completely. When we were crossing the ocean, we didn't care. We get there when we get there. So if you know the winds died down, we saw a storm was coming, we'd leave the storm sails up for half the day, wait, and then when it finally hit, we'd be going again. Where now, like, wind goes away real quick. We get sails up, we get them changed, we get them moved, and we're going faster as a result. Mads? Yeah? We're almost out of the wind shadow, so we're gonna get PJ up soon. That was short lived. Yeah. Yep. I gained some much needed sleep after my watch and I got it because we were in the wind shadow of this huge island. <laughs> it's just crazy to come out to the cockpit and see this enormous mountain. <laughs> it's a shame we're not stopping there. It looks beautiful, uh, but it's still really cool to pass so close to it that we get to see it in pretty good detail. Hello, Charlie. What do you think of seeing land for the first time? In like a week. Since you left Zernam. What do you think? One fluff for yes, two fluffs for no. I uh, made some easy peasy ramen with um, with an egg on top. <laughs> Essence of college. I'm gonna give Charlie some pasta. And our next island is Montserrat, which in 97 went kaboom with a big volcanic explosion. And when I grew up in Puerto Rico, like Puerto Rico just got covered in ash from this volcano, like just super far away. And it, I always thought it'd be so cool to go see this place. And we're gonna be passing it, which is awesome. But we're gonna be passing it super late tonight. So I'm not gonna see anything. 
So we're just gonna keep beating the windward in the trisail and staysail as usual. And then very late tonight, we should be able to turn and now, and then start going downwind, hopefully. That would be super awesome because that would be the end of this beating business. So it's about uh, 2 a.m. and I've just adjusted our course, so we're going windward of Scarborough and St. Christopher, but leeward of Anguilla. So we should be getting to our destination, St. John, in about a day and a half. Meaning we'll be arriving on Christmas Day. The stars are really beautiful tonight. We've got really amazing bioluminescence. So altogether, it's a very pretty watch. Hey, my watch is over. You have a parrot on your butt. It's a Jolly Roger. Adventure so far as to say that today has probably been our best day at sea on this single passage for a few reasons. One is we were able to turn more downwind so we're not being tossed about. We've been able to sit outside because it's been nice and sunny and calm and we're reading, we're watching all of the different islands go by in the distance. And we're watching some uh, boobies fly about right now, which is always fun to see because we really haven't seen much wildlife on this trip. Just a stray flying fish here and there. So nice to see signs of life. And tomorrow, late in the day, we should be arriving at St. John. And I'm praying that we do because tomorrow is Christmas Eve. I would love to be anchored by Christmas Eve. So one thing that's really sad about seeing these islands just go by is they're just going by. We don't actually get to stop at them or anything. And I, I, it's like when we started planning this trip, I was looking at all the islands and the cool harbors and the reefs and just so many really neat things. But the problem is every island you go to is its own country and each one has a two week quarantine all the time. So that means every two islands that you visit, you just spent a month in quarantine. So we're skipping all these cool islands, going straight to the USBI, where we do one quarantine and have access to three islands. Like I said before, it's a pretty okay day. 
still pretty rough out and lots of wind, but we are finally getting pushed by waves instead of beaten by them, which just changes the entire experience of sailing, as many of you I'm sure know. It's kind of our tradition to come into a place with the last two days of sailing being the best. <laughs> so why break from that tradition now? Well, it's 6.30. Super late for us, I know. Maddie's already in bed going to sleep, but I'm wide awake, so I'm doing first watch. And it's so cool because in the distance, we see the lights of St. Martin. But sadly, it's dark, so we can't see the topless beaches. Whoa, it's us. Yeah, so we're doing a steady five to six knots. Dead downwind, or not that, broad reach. A very deep broad reach, but we're less than a hundred miles to go to our anchorage. Yes. I know, fireworks and applause, because we've been almost a thousand miles so far. Oof. So Maddie's sleeping, Charlie's sleeping, and I'm gonna go out on watch and uh, enjoy the lights of the islands that we're not visiting as we s just slip on by in the darkness. All right, I just finished up a seven hour watch because I was was full of energy. Now I'm tired. It's Maddie's turn now, so it's two in the morning. There's a lot more shipping traffic now. I've seen three boats and one of them didn't have AIS. I think it was a private sailboat. Uh, but yeah, we're coming up on St. Croix and then after that will be St. John, which is what we're heading to. Never put off maintenance. So one of the control lines to Wendy or Windbane got kind of chafed on our Atlantic crossing and I meant to address it in Surinam. And then I got distracted and I never did. And I was like, hey, it'll be fine. No, no big deal. And then tonight I was looking at it and of the 12 strands that make up the Dynamo strand line, there were three left. Super excited for this. Like the Virgin Islands are known to be just like a sailor's playground. And just looking at all these islands so close to each other and just oh I've been studying the charts and there's all these really cool anchorages like everywhere. Oh, I am so excited for this. We are coming into St. John. We're about a mile from our anchorage and it's just really exciting because it's a Christmas miracle. We made it by Christmas Eve day and we're gonna be able to at least Zoom call with our families and uh, video chat with everybody for Christmas, which we were really hoping was gonna be possible. It was a wild night. Our wind vanes lines broke and Herbie came out here and fixed it. It took about uh, 45 minutes to 50 minutes and I was hand steering in this giant kind of stormy weather and Herbie was splicing <laughs> and did an amazing job and fixed Wendy because we would have had to hand steer for 10 more hours if he hadn't fixed that. And finally this hellish passage is coming to an end.
American bacon. Finally. That's what you want on a first meal. Bay, and we came here because it's famous for sea turtles. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.